Hello, noble friends, and welcome to Science and Spirituality. Today, we once again delve into the secrets of the mind with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dr. Dispenza is an American expert on the role and function of the human brain. He has authored the book Evolve Your Brain and produced several DVDs and CDs featuring his past seminars. He is well known for having appeared in the critically acclaimed 2004 American documentary What the Bleep Do We Know? Dr. Dispenza's training and education are in the fields of neurology, neuroscience, cellular biology, memory formation, aging, and longevity. He also has a Doctor of Chiropractic degree and is an honorary member of the National Board of Chiropractic Examiners in the United States. Years ago, Dr. Dispenza experienced an accident which left him with several broken bones in his back. The grim prognosis by doctors was that he would never be able to walk again. Dr. Dispenza has always been interested in human potential. He strongly believes that the power that creates our body can also heal disease or injury. Thus, he decided not to have the back surgery his doctors recommended and instead surrendered himself to this great power. About 12 weeks later, he returned to work fully recovered. After this life-changing experience, he traveled the world studying spontaneous remission or the sudden reversal of an illness without a medical explanation. He found that there were four common characteristics among these people he met who had undergone this wonderful transformation. First, these persons all believed that there was some spiritual aspect that lived within them. Second, they all realized that it was their own negative thoughts that had caused their condition. Third, they said they had to transform themselves by thinking new things and become different people. And the fourth characteristic was their loss of time and space for long periods of time. Now we join Dr. Dispenza as he discusses the three parts of the brain, or three brains, and their relationship to our thinking, actions, and the state of being. Dr. Dispenza defines the state of being as the cycle of thinking and feeling over time that begins to condition the body to memorize an emotional state better than the conscious mind. When I studied spontaneous remissions, you know, I learned a lot of things about human nature. And unfortunately, most people wait for crisis or trauma to get serious about change. Probably over 90% of the people on the planet live in survival. They live reacting to their environment or they can create survival just by thought alone. They can create the chemistry of stress just by thinking about something that's going to happen in the future or something that's happened to them in the past. And so they're living by those chemicals and those emotions. But we have three brains in one brain. And those three brains allow us to go from thinking to doing to being. So. The thinking brain is the neocortex. That's that corrugated, walnut-shaped, fold and valley bumps of uh, gray matter that is the home of the, the identity. It's, you're listening to me right now with your neocortex. And when we learn new information, when we learn philosophy, when we learn knowledge, when we learn data, we forge new circuits in the brain. That's what learning is, making new connections. And we store that circuitry, that information, it leaves a footprint in the brain in terms of synaptic connection. Any new experience creates a memory. One has to learn how to reinforce the positive experience or practice applying the experience until it turns into a habit. So, you read the book by Gandhi about peace. And uh, you go to church or you go to your spiritual um, organization and you shake hands with everybody and say peace be with you now <clears throat> the next step is how are you going to apply it how are you going to modify your behavior in some way when you have a new experience the end product is called a feeling or an emotion and we can remember experiences better because we can remember how they feel because that new experience in your environment produced a new internal chemistry it disrupted your chemical continuity and because you started to feel differently the brain woke up for a moment and you paid attention to whatever it was out there that made you feel this way internally it's called the memory 
And so when we have a new experience, when we apply peace now, when you're pulling out a church and instead of cutting somebody off, you let them go ahead of you, you just demonstrate the peace. And when you demonstrate peace, you have a new emotion. You begin to feel it. Oh, I feel that. Or you go to your boss and instead of judging him and getting angry, you actually sit down in a state of peace. Now, we're chemically teaching the body. We're instructing the body to what the mind is intellectually understood. A habit becomes established and is the state of being when memorized by the body. So knowledge is for the mind and experience is for the body. And that experience then is measured in feeling. So when you demonstrate peace, you feel the feeling of peace. So the body gets the signal. But it's not enough to have the experience once. We have to be able to replicate it at will. To do it over and over again. And make it look natural and easy. And when we're able to repeat it at will, we activate that third brain called the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is the microprocessor in the brain. And that's where we've practiced something so many times that the body has the memory as well as the conscious mind. And that's what a habit is. A habit is when the body has become the mind. So when we're in a state of being, we would say that the mind and body are working together and the body's been conditioned both neurologically and chemically through experience that it now knows compassion better than the conscious mind. And now we're in a state of being. We will pause now for some brief messages. When Science and Spirituality returns, we will have more from this enlightening interview with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. We now resume our interview with Dr. Joe Dispenza, an American expert on the role and function of the brain. In his books and lectures, he discusses how he believes we can shift our lives in a constructive direction by better understanding the interaction of body and mind. According to Dr. Dispenza, the power of our thinking is inestimable as thoughts directly affect how we experience life. You see the thought how you think is the electrical charge in the quantum field and how you feel is the magnetic charge you emanate so how you think and feel creates an electromagnetic field that affects every single atom in your life when people develop constructive habits that are the result of positive thinking it is truly a powerful phenomenon when we have a group of people that can think compassion think peace, think um, uh, goodwill and generosity, charity, and demonstrate it and be able to maintain that state of being where they've memorized it internally. Nothing in their external world can move them from it. When they're in a state of being, they're more prone to do things and think things equal to that state of being. How does meditation create fundamental changes within us? Meditation is the process of knowing yourself, understanding who you are, and because we have such a large frontal lobe, we can observe our own thoughts, our own actions, and our own behaviors, and that concept in neuroscience is called metacognition. And because we can do that, that allows us to modify and change our behavior so that we can do a better job in life. If you're doing meditation, in the beginning it takes a lot of practice, and it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of awareness to be able to connect but if you're doing meditation properly you want to meditate because it feels so great you're elevated you're lifted you're coherent you want that feeling in Tibetan the exact translation of the word meditation means to become familiar with to make known once you begin to have the thought become the experience the end product of an experience is called an emotion and if your experience is happening in your mind you are beginning to feel elevated now we're reconditioning the body to a new mind and now we have changed the circuitry we reminded ourselves every day of who we wanted to be and we've conditioned the body to a new mind and when that person gets up and they can become familiar with that new self we could say now that they're in a state of meditation because now they're memorizing a new aspect of themselves as well. 
Dr. Dispensa further explains how practicing meditation transforms the brain. So the process of meditation requires unlearning and relearning, or what neuroscience calls pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections. If your thinking and feeling has been negative for the last 20 years, your mind may be thinking positively, but your body is remembering being negative. 90% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is sitting in a subconscious set of programs, automatic programs that operate without our conscious mind. And so here's the 10% of your conscious mind wanting to change against 90% of, of who we've become as a personality. So we have to learn how to get into the operating system. It takes going past the analytical mind to be able to do that and that takes practice. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. And meditation really means to begin to think or begin to manage your internal world without the influence of the external world. To close, Dr. Dispenza reiterates that bringing out the best within ourselves need not be initiated by suffering. You know, my message is really simple. Why wait for a disease, for crisis in your life? We could either learn and change in a state of joy and true inspiration or we can learn and change in a state of suffering, in chaos, in, um, in urgency. And uh, let's, let's choose uh, the former. We're the best when we're spontaneous. We're the best when we're not concerned about how we look or if we're succeeding or failing or who's watching. We're the best when we're just loose and we're free. And, and so the universe works in unusual ways uh, to, to to lighten us up and to bring us experiences that, uh, that make us uh, move into a state of joy. We sincerely thank Dr. Joe Dispenza for sharing his perspectives on the mind-body connection, the power of thoughts, and the nature of habits, as well as for his wisdom regarding how meditation can transform our lives. Our appreciation, intelligent viewers, for being with us today for Science and Spirituality. Up next is Words of Wisdom following Noteworthy News. May we all realize our greatest selves. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash is is.